Hey everyone, it's the Jewish Woogie here with you today. Today we're going to be talking about the mini cackpot game on Final Fantasy XIV. So you may be asking, why should I listen to you about this game? I mean, is there any special reason? And I would argue, yes, there is. Uh, a little bit about my background. I actually have a advanced degree in a social science. And what that means uh, for you as a player of the mini cackpot game is that I have an advanced knowledge of statistics. And statistics are really what this game is all about. Most of your cards in this game are going to be bad and give you little opportunity to actually make any money. Now a couple cards are going to be really good and on those cards you need to capitalize your earnings. And by using statistics and some smart decision making you can do this. All right, so here I am at the mini cackpot game. I've already bought my first ticket. Now you have three tickets together. You only get three tickets a day. Uh, they total about 600 MGP. So your goal is to get more than 600 MGP. Now the point of this game generally, you can think of this as one piece of a Sudoku puzzle. You have basically all these numbers that are covered and your goal is to scratch off three and then pick a number that's going to get you a decent prize. You can see your prize guide sort of over here on the right uh, side. So your big winners are six, 21, 23, and 24. Um, after you scratch off your numbers, the next thing you do is select a row. And you can see you can pick any row, any column, as well as uh, two of the diagonals. Now, you can go online and you can find basically simulators that'll tell you which row to pick that will give you your best odds. But what none of those simulators seem to do is really tell you about what numbers you should scratch off to begin with. So I'm going to basically focus a lot of this around that. And if you really want to know all the statistics behind which one you should pick, you could go ahead, pull one of those simulators that looks like there's about 10 or 20 out there. So. I'm going to start with my first card of the day. Now my first card of the day, the number that I have revealed is a 4. Now a 4 is not a good number because basically the best you can do with it is a 21, meaning that you'd have a 9, 8, and 4. And the worst number, uh, and, and on the low side, the best number you can do is a 7. Now a 7 is not a winner, a 4 is a marginal winner. So what I'm trying to do is find a really high or a really low number. Now I'm going to pick one that uh, in this case, I'm going to pick the middle one in this case. Um, typically I wouldn't pick one in line with the 4 necessarily, but the the middle is going to give me a lot of options. It's going to give me a lot of vision about what I want and it's going to direct me for the future. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this middle one. And here I've gotten a three. Now a three I can look for a two and a one or I can look for other high numbers. In this column I know my best number, if I, if I had a nine here, my highest number would be a 16. That's not a winner. My lowest number if it's a one is an eight. That's a decent winner but you're in this to try to win a lot of MGP. So 720 really doesn't do a whole lot of good. So I'm gonna use this three now and try to find the two or the one. So I'm gonna go over here because it doesn't line up with the four. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that. Okay, so now I've found the seven. So given what I know now, this row is not going to be very good. As you can kind of see here, you're going to have 10. You're going to maybe hit 19. Best case, you're going to hit 11. I know this row is not very good. Now this row could still be good because it could be very high. And this row could still be good because it's very low. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pick this, low, this row because I'm trying to optimize. I'm trying to find the 10,000. So let's go ahead and select this one. Okay, so I'm in a position that is not very great here. What I know, and this is pretty much the worst card that you can have, is let's take a look at all of these numbers. Now this row here, I have a 12. Maybe I can hit a 21. This row here, I have a 10. Maybe I can hit a 19. 
This row here I don't know anything about, but I know it won't be very high because the 7 and 8 are already in use, and I know it can't be the 6 because the 3 is already in use. This row we've already kind of gone over. It's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. This row could have a 9. I could get to 20, but 20 is not very good. It's not one of your big winners. And this row, the best it could have is a 9 and a 6, which would get me to 19. Again, not one of your big winners. Now, this row is the only row that, at this point, you can have a 6. Now, since I don't know much about the other cards, I don't have a good chance of hitting one of these high numbers, I'm going to go ahead and select this row. Again, you can go online. Maybe this isn't the best row to select, but for me, when I look at it, I'm trying to hit a big winner, and at this point, I've eliminated all the other rows, so I'm going to go ahead and select this one. Okay, again, this row, not a big winner. So let's take a look at the card. Again, this row, I could have gotten 119, this row 108, this row 118. This row would have given me 720, which is probably my biggest winner on the card and just going through real fast. Yeah, so overall, okay, I could have won a couple hundred. I could have paid for mine on the day, but this card was not a card you're going to win big. And one of the things you have to understand about the mini cackpot game is that just some cards you're not going to be able to win big. So I'm going to go ahead and move to my next card. Now in this card, I'm not going to show you everything because basically this card is almost identical to the last one. It's just not a very good card. And uh, as I play through it, uh, basically I get a very similar result. This was the final result of that card. Again, not a good card, not a good result, but there's no other row that you have the confidence in to do that with. So again, look at the card here. You have 108, 36 is the row I selected, 54, 144, 72, 180, 108, and 54. So the maximum that you could get on this card is actually 180. This is another losing card. So hopefully my last card here is going to be a winning card. Okay, so here your strategy is going to totally change. Now, you have the 9, which is a card that is going to let you win, hopefully, if you have a decent card, pretty easily. So from the 9, you want to try to find your other high numbers, or at least one high number that matches the 9. So I'm going to go right to the middle. Okay, now in the middle, I'm going to hit 1. So now I have one very high number, I have one very low number. What I'm going to do is pick a number at this point that gives me information about trying to go both high and low. Okay, so here I have a 6. Now, a 6, if an 8 shows up, gives me a 23. A 23 is a big winner, but I still might have a low number. So I want more information here about the this row or about the 9. Um, but I'd also like to collect a little more information about the one. So in this case, this line is a great line. Okay, so now you get put into a complicated position. Here you can select here, you have 9, 9, you have 18, not a winning card. But you are given more information about this lane. Now, this lane, you have basically a 20% chance of hitting 10,000. If you multiply those odds out, there's no better spot for you to select than this one. Um, basically, it averages out that if you did this, basically an infinite number of times, you would average out getting 2,000 a hit. Since there's no other hit I can achieve on this board that is over 2,000, then I'm going to go ahead and select that. Let me break this down one more time. You have two things on this board, knowns and unknowns. Your unknowns are theoretically randomized. That means that one out of every five times, you're going to hit a two in your diagonal column. Now, if you take the one out of every five times you're going to hit times the reward of 10,000, you get an average bonus of 2,000 to play. Since the only other thing that you have that can give you 2,000 to play is the 24, and that is mathematically eliminated because you know you cannot have 9, 8, 7 in a row, 9, 8, and 7 in a row, you can determine that at this point, your best mathematical option 
is to pick the column with the 3 and the 1 in it. Because theoretically, if you played this out millions and millions of times, you would gain money every single set of five times. So with that in mind, I am going to go ahead and select this row. And what do you know? I hit the one out of five times, got the 10,000. Even though my first two cards were bad by following this strategy, I was able to get the 10,000. So there you have it. That's the mini cackpot game and the strategy that I use. Uh, again, it's going to vary a little bit on every single card. I'm really happy I was able to hit a big number with you guys because my first two cards were kind of crap. As you saw, um, I couldn't even have won a thousand on either one of those cards. But by using this strategy and sort of thoughtfully thinking about which numbers you're picking and where you need the information, you can have your winning cards count. And that's what it's really about in this game. Most cards are not going to be winners, and it's about making your winning cards count. <laughs>